we are checking the balance of these cells with a little hobby meter. And this is going to be a little hard to do. Mm -hmm. This thing's seven cells. This is the voltage. Wow, that's really good. Okay. So that's the one string, and let's try the other string now. This is only saying 7S because uh, I gotta manually check one of the cells. So, same voltage. Yup. Wow. This is working a lot better than I even uh, hoped, actually. These balancers are ridiculously good. Wow, very happy. Because these were not that balanced when I first uh, when I first charged them. So I'm gonna just check those last two cells that I have to check. And I'm sure they're gonna be pretty close. And uh, yeah, just wanted to share this with you guys, show how these balancers are working. They seem to be working quite well. And we gotta remember, is each one of these is balancing uh, three, uh, three of these packs. So it's they're keeping up with three packs. So I wonder how many packs it'll actually be able to keep up with. I have to do some experimentation, but so far three packs and we're working great. So we're doing the Powerwall test again. Same pack of batteries, same balancers. New charger though. Got a new buck converter. This one's rated at 1500 watts. I don't know how the heck this can put up 1500 watts. Barely do 500, but that's okay. 500 is plenty. Seeing as this was only like, well, I don't even know. I can't remember. I think it was under quite a bit under 50 bucks. It's nice. It actually needs to be on its side uh, for cooling. This cycles on and off really well. I'm very happy with it so far. And it's got 40 amps of fuses. <coughs> So that's not going to blow very easily, but this one I like because it's controlled by pots. It's got three pots. You got uh, this pot controls your voltage in, so this will only turn on once it's hit it, a certain voltage, and I have it set to the panel's main operating voltage, which is about 28 volts. And then this is a constant current pot. And this is a constant voltage pot. This one I have set to 66 volts for the batteries. And then this one I have set uh, to max amps, whatever this thing can throw at it. So what it does is, is it takes as much power from the panels as possible, as long as it doesn't dip below 28 volts. And that's the power it will put into the batteries. So pretty much it's like a manual, manually started MPPT, except for it's not tracking. You gotta track it yourself. <clears throat> it works pretty good. It's not nearly as efficient might only be like 96% or 97% or whatever, but it's still pretty good. Um, yeah, so these ones I had issues with because you had to click start every day. So it went, it went dark at night, they shut down. Next day they turned on, but you have to hit the start button to start it. Pain in the butt. <coughs> might use these uh, just like as a, a boost charger if I need them. Um, but they're not quite what I wanted. Uh, that is more what I wanted right there. So yeah, give you guys a little update. We are running inside the house, same as thing as before. Uh, let's see if you guys can see that. That's the voltage. There's your wattage. It's not being used a whole lot right now because no one's inside the house. But we're just gonna set that there for now, and we're gonna let this uh, run. And maybe we'll even get some more batteries hooked up today. Who knows? I ordered a 16S balancer. So, or two of them. So I should be able to take another six and add it to here. But we'll see. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit the like button. Helps a lot. Got my lithium power it and my LiPo ammo box. Both running off this inverter through 
that splitter and it's also going into my house um, let's see what we are down to so far okay lift it up a bit okay input says 109 volts no sorry input is 66 volts outputs 109 110 I don't know if that's right I'm gonna check it we're pulling 333 watts now let's look at volts uh, volt this is saying see look that says 100 oh something just turned on oh it was a power fridge I guess it was up to 116 for a second not saying 110 which is fine as long as it doesn't go much below that which it hasn't been I find this output meter is inaccurate the 12 volt unit I got is a lot more accurate I, I put this on and the, tw the one I the other meter I got is more uh, in sync with this one so I'm not sure what's up with that but uh, yeah still taking quite a bit of power there you go anyways just gonna leave that and let that run for a bit <coughs> It's doing good. It's starting to get a little warm. Oh, got something going on in the settings. I gotta check that out. That's, uh, I think it's uh, the voltage is going too low or too high or something. So I, I gotta set something to get it perfect. So here's my system at work. My wife is uh, using a central vac and a bunch of stuff in the house. We're pulling 1.6 kilowatts. Oh, and whatever she was doing just turned off, and now we're putting power back in. Fans turned on on the unit. We were pulling over 20 amps AC. Now we're not. We're pulling over 200 amps out. And yeah, there's the Antrax SW3000. Love this inverter. Highly recommend it. Even though they are ridiculously expensive now. Luckily, I got this one before they went up in price. But yeah, everything's working great. You got 33 amps, 24 amps, and a measly 16 amps. But that's, oh, it's going up a little bit. That went up to 33 for a second. Some cloud edge effect happening. But uh, yeah, we're working good. And this display is so nice to have. You can see exactly what your house is using we are at we just use a bunch of power, oh we're still at 100 it's pretty good it's wattage that's the amp hours we've used, 1.3 so we just gotta replenish that yeah everything's working good disabled all my fans for now, don't need them um, this thing has amazing cooling. You can easily put 40 amps on this and it doesn't even get, it barely gets warm. Like it, it you can feel it, it's warmer than the uh, advent temperatures and uh, your own uh, hand, but it's uh, it's a good unit. It cools much nicer than these, these ones do. These ones are still pretty good, but not near as good as that one. So I got the whole, Nine yards out. I got a big mess. I'm playing with a little bit of everything. Charging the, the 140 amp hour power it, charging the 120 amp hour lipo box, a lot of solar while the sun's out. We're not producing more than we're using at the moment. Well, it goes on and off, depends. We are using. That's what we're using. We're not pulling in a lot of solar. These panels are in my backyard. They. Put out a ton of power in the morning, but then that's it. Anything past one o'clock, they make no power. And the angles of my panels, the way they are on my roof, are just terrible for winter. So I make very little power in the winter in comparison, just because uh, I live in a subdivision. I can't angle them properly. They look ugly. Don't want to bug my neighbors. So that's what I got to deal with until I can uh, get into the country sometime. But anyways, go. The 60 watt version and the 12 volt version, or 60 volt version, the 12 volt version. Yeah. One thing I noticed immediately is that one has a label where I'm looking at it and the plugs are to the left. And then if I'm looking at this one, plugs are to the right. It's weird. But uh, that's just the way they put it in the case. 
Um, I have this battery in charge. It's only hooked up to one battery, this inverter, which isn't, like this that battery can provide enough power for it, but ideal would be all three of these at least. And so we got 14 volts in the battery. I've already tried this a few times with the saw. This thing, these are good inverters. I, I recommend these. Uh, I took this apart. It looks almost exactly the same as that one. I'm gonna do a comparison. I'll take them both apart beside each other. Um, I believe they look exactly the same, but I looked at them at two different times, so I got to do it again at the same time to find out. But we're going to do a quick little start up, and you can watch the volts and the, uh, the input and the output volts. Works extremely well. Like I said, this meter seems to work a lot better than mine. Um, because when I plug, when I plug the kilowatt meter here, it doesn't dip in voltage like this one does. It, the kilowatt meter says it goes down to about 105 to 110 volts, and my meter says it goes down to like 94 volts sometimes, which isn't true. At least I don't think it's true. This one doesn't seem to do that, which is nice. But I also have a clamp meter to show the inrush current. So let's see what we get here. That was uh, 222, and you got to remember, it, the inrush could be more if I had more batteries hooked up, so this isn't quite ideal, but uh, still getting some re pretty good current out of one battery. <laughs> Looks like 222 is the highest inrush current, it's 2220 watts approximately. Uh, but that's only what that catches. I don't know if it's triggering fast enough to catch exactly uh, what we want to catch, but yeah. So the 12 volt model works just as good as the 60 volt model. So very impressed. And <laughs> look, they only give you uh, three 8 gauge wires, which is, it's working. Um, so, anyways, thanks for watching, guys. More test. We're gonna. We got the plug for the compressor. This thing takes, this is the mo the one that takes the most power in my garage, this item here, so let's see. No problem. Very interesting, works really well. Very happy with it. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. I've been running this today and we produce almost one kilowatt of power and when the batteries are staying relatively charged 66 volts is full, we're almost at 63 that means this thing with with uh, fi almost 500 watts of panels, uh, 470 watts is doing its thing I'm very happy with it, it's warm so you know it's at about 500 watts is about its limit, but it, the fan, cooling fan has not turned on. Where When I had it hooked up to a power supply inside, I was able to get it turned on and you can get the thermal cool itself. And it's doing a good job. Let's see what my volts are. Pretty good. Current watt draw. And kilowatt usage. Not bad. I'm going to continue this into the night and see if I can uh, keep running. Now, this is the only bit that's hooked up right there, those six batteries. And then those six batteries plus all of these are good batteries that I'm going to be hooking up on a power wall. And then I got these three batteries. There's a dead cell in each or a broken connection. And yeah, so we're going to be uh, playing around with this. Well guys, that's about it for solar. It is 3.40 in the afternoon. 3.40 and the sun is going down. It's absolutely ridiculous. I can't stand this time change, but... Oh boy. Anyways. My wife was just using the sh shop vac on the Jeep. and Something big in the house turned on. We were taking 25 amps. 
on the AC side. That is almost the max I can take with my system only because of my main breaker. My main breaker is a 250 amp uh, midnight solar breaker and that always trips. This thing can do 6,000 watts for 10 seconds but that will not allow it to. The second I go over uh, 3,000 watts for more than about 10 seconds it trips. So is that about my limit? I need to get a bigger breaker or put another one in parallel perhaps. But um, <coughs> yeah, so main massive battery bank. I'm not sure how many amp hours it is at 20 amp or 20 hour discharge, which is something around 4,000. At a 10 hour discharge, though, I do know, and they are uh, it's like 2,800 uh, milliamp or 2,800 uh, amp hours at at a 10 hour rate. So <coughs> doing all right. And we're now we're down to only taking a little bit from the battery, so the batteries are starting to bump back up in voltage. <coughs> the power wall. These batteries are not hooked up. None of these are still. As you can see, all those need to be hooked up still. What I'm testing with is six there. That's about one kilowatt worth of power. These are around 50 to 60 kilowatts of power. Um, and right before the sun goes down we are sitting at 63 volts so that is about 90 percent charged maybe even 95 we're almost fully charged not quite I'd say about 90 and since let's see I started this test at 12 30 1 o'clock ish we've used 0.84 of a kilowatt let's focus here there we go 0.84 of a kilowatt We've been steadily drawing about 90 watts the whole time. Uh, when I was gaming on my laptop, it went up to 280 or 250, something like that, for about an hour. Uh, there's your volts, there's your amps, there's your watts, uh, there's your frequency, there's your power factor. That's uh, only 75, so you got to add about 25% actually usable power that uh, this unit's taking so yep we're doing good and this this is the unit I would recommend for doing a project like this it's working flawlessly I like it a lot so far I might be buying more of these these ones I don't like so much uh, they're good they're really good if you want a universal power supply that's what these are for but 12 volts in, you can get up to uh, 90 volts out. Um, and amazing units, extremely cheap. They're like $23 each. And I recommend them for universal power supplies. They would work great for that. And I bought all of these because I thought I could use them. And I got too many. So I won't be using those, but I will be using these. I only bought two of these because I wanted to be careful. And thanks for watching. This is that dreaded part of the day. When the sun goes down, so what's happening is, is this, is this unit's turning on and off, on and off. So it's pretty much pulsing power into these batteries now instead of constant current because of what how I have the voltage set to. And this is ideal um, for when there's, oh, let's focus here. This is ideal for when there's uh, sun and no sun. This is the best I could get it. And uh, yeah, so we have almost no power. Sun's going down. So the panels are at a huge angle now. They're making very little power. Like, look at there's 700. Oh yeah, 750 watts of power, and that's what it's producing. 14.6 amps. It should be more like 40, 45 amps, but nope, not this time of year. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys.